Hi, Dwayne Lesnar back in part one. We took a look at the architecture of Cluster Protect. Now we're going to go through the new deployment, which features the Cluster Protect option. We will deploy a brand new cluster. We'll have Prism Central already up and running. And then we will protect both Prism Central. We'll protect our cluster. We'll wait a while and then we will uh, fail our cluster and then do a redeployment and ensure that we get all of our workloads back. So let's dive right in. So we're in our NC2 clusters portal. We're just going to do general purpose cluster. And so cluster protect is only four currently AWS clusters. Give it a name, we'll deploy to the North Virginia region. We add some QoS tags here, uh, just so we can get access to features before they're publicly, so we can get this video out, so nothing you really have to worry about. Then we'll pick uh, Z1D, we'll do a three node cluster. And then uh, we have an existing network already set up, so we'll deploy to that. So you can either do an existing or a new environment when you're deploying, which is perfectly fine. Find most customers already have existing environments, so it's great that we're able to slot in. The access policies are security groups that you can use to lock down the CVMs, HV, and your workloads that are sitting on the, the cluster itself. So here we have a menu for cluster protect. It's just notifying you if you want to protect your cluster, and then you know obviously the, the downfalls if you're not protecting your cluster. And then we have a nice little readout of our deployment, where it's going to, any quotas that um, we may or may not be meeting. So we hit next. And then that takes about 40 minutes and we'll have a brand new cluster. So once that's finished, we can head off and deploy um, Prism Central, which we'll already have pre-stood up for this example. So we have our cluster. Uh, it's important. Uh, you see that cluster ID, we'll use that multiple times in the demo. So here's our Prism element, it's up and loaded. Now we're going to run a command line uh, to protect our Prism Central. So our cluster is already connected to Prism Central. So that command line run from the Prism Central command line allows us to back up our Prism Central directly to S3. You do need um, some S3 buckets and it's noted there Nutanix dash clusters dash CP dash PCDR dash Acme. We want those buckets to be brand new uh, when you create them in AWS. And now that we have our cluster protected, we're deploying the Snap Engine. The Snap Engine is the first look at our uh, AOS snapshot technology that's taking snapshots and moving them into S3. So first starting in AWS and eventually over time you'll see that filter out to other areas, so that's uh, Nutanix multi-cloud snapshot technology. Um, so we've deployed that snapshot engine, which is really just a series of, it's a Kubernetes cluster running services. And so now that that's up, we can protect our cluster, which is another uh, command line. So once again, we have uh, a bucket for Prism Central and we have a bucket for the clusters themselves back up. So we take that UID cluster, the CLI, protect cluster, uh, the UID, and now we'll start to back up. So our backups, uh, we keep two snapshots and then uh, we keep uh, continuing to back up all of the VMs at one hour intervals. <clears throat> so here we're gonna, uh, in Prism Central, we're taking a look at the virtual machines. So we just have two virtual machines that we have along with the uh, Prism Central and other services. So very important VM and very, very important VM. So if we take a look at our very important VM, launch the console, we'll see that uh, it's never too early to start thinking about .next. So uh, that's coming up in May, Barcelona. So there's our wallpaper. We wanna make sure that when we restore it, we get that same beautiful .next wallpaper up and running. If we take a look at our protection policies, we see that the those command lines have created a protection policy with our one hour backing up everything. There's a category that will actually every 30 minutes go and look for additional virtual machines and volume groups and ensure they're being backed up to our 
S3 bucket, which we listed off in those command lines. Nothing really exciting about creating the buckets themselves. They just have to be Nutanix dash clusters, dash whatever you want to name it, and then uh, it will work accordingly. So here uh, we have our category. We see our, the volume groups and the two VMs already being protected. So everything is great there. <clears throat> and then uh, now we're just at a point. We let that run for a bit. So we ensure that both the Prism Central backup and our virtual machines are being backed up to S3. And so we're safe, we're protected. We can start taking a look at working through the recovery process now that Prism Central and our virtual machines are on S3. For the restore process, we're going to look at it failing. We can go reset our cluster to a failed state. You don't. This doesn't have to be done, but it allows um, for easier redeployment of your cluster. So. Uh, there may be a case where someone actually deleted it, so this wouldn't be needed, but it does make the restoration a bit easier. So you set your cluster to a failed state, then you can start the recovery from the UI, and it will re reuse existing networks that you already deployed with uh, previously. So even if something happened in the AZ, you should be, you know, um, assured that the AWS region is in a healthy state before, I guess, proceeding. The NC2 portal won't, you know, have all of the details of whatever outage just occurred in that scenario. So here we're going to redeploy our cluster that we just created before. We have our VPCs and existing um, subnets showing up here under the previous configuration. Um, so we're just going to redeploy to those existing networks and then once this kicks off we're just going to go through the same process um, we'll run the cluster we'll make sure that we have our loaded prism central bits that we need for for redeploying um, once we have the bits loaded we can run the recovery for prism central then we need to redeploy the snapshot engine and then we uh, run a recovery plan um, we are essentially using Nutanix DR um, that you saw with the protection policies and the recovery plan. So our cluster is being redeployed. So once again, um, 30, 40 minutes, so we'll have a cluster up and running. Obviously, we're speeding through this so we don't have to <laughs> watch the paint dry. So we have a CVMIP. We were already connected and logged in. We need to add back our Prism Central network. We also have to add back the server network for the recovery plan. It'll still work without it, but then you'll, you just won't have NICs reattached to your virtual machines. So we add back in our Prism Central. You see that we were able to see the AWS network, so um, it's pretty handy uh, as far as restoring your network information. We need a DHCP pool for uh, the microservices platform it'll use um, static and dhcp ips it needs three ips from from the deployment <laughs> so we have our prism central network deployed the server network will actually just do behind the scenes since it's really the same steps <clears throat> so now uh, we have our prism central bits already uploaded and so now we can just run the recovery Nutanix dash clusters, uh, CP or PCDR, Acme is our S3 bucket. So now we're grabbing the backup information and we're going to essentially redeploy Prism Central with that. And once Prism Central's up, we'll once again then redeploy our Nutanix multi cloud snapshot engine, taking the AOS snapshots and that are sitting in S3 and recovering them onto the cluster. So we have our Prism Central deployed, but we need to make sure that we connect our Prism element to PC. So hit connect, we're registered, and now we can run the snapshot engine, load up. So essentially the exact same command, except now we have a dash uh, recover. 
So this also can take about 20 to 30 minutes for this, uh, all of the different services to come up. So we'll let this run. And then as soon as it's finished, we can start the recovery of all of our uh, protected workloads. It has finished. So now we're just logging into Prism Central. Uh, our cluster is showing connected and fine. Now we should see the recovery plan as well. Uh, we see both clusters, Fin1 and Fin. The Fin is our old one. So we're gonna grab the cluster ID to recreate the recover, uh, recovery plan. So we grab that UID, and then we also grab the UID of the new cluster. So once we have those, uh, it can be handy just to copy and paste into a notepad. Eventually these will end up going all in the UI, but uh, in this version, uh, it is command line. So clear that off, we'll run the create recovery plan. So the dash O is the old, the dash N is the new, and then it'll recreate the recovery plan. So then we can go off and execute it. So our recovery plan has been created. Now we will go to the recovery plans and execute. So we have 14 volume groups on our two uh, virtual machines. And then once they are finished, we'll take a look at our very, very important virtual machine and ensure that it's been restored and take a look at the desktop. So if you're familiar with Nutanix DR, this is the exact same set of features. So here we have our two virtual machines. Uh, it took about seven, eight, almost eight minutes to recover the last one uh, from S3. And now if we go and take a look at that virtual machine, launch the console, we'll see that we're back to where we left off before. So a really easy way to protect your environment natively uh, with efficient Nutanix snapshots that are, you know, won't really affect performance as they're hardware-based snapshots while well, get you to S3. Um, so, you know, you'll always have a, a, a backup sitting in AWS. So we uh, finalize the recovery. It'll go off and delete the old one. To re-protect your cluster, just rerun the command line and you're good to go. Cluster Protect is ready to be there in your time of need, whatever your failure scenario is. Please check out the newly updated tech note on the Nutanix portal, where we'll go into this feature more in depth. We'll see you in the next video.